Hello PennDOT Community Traffic Safety Partners. Thank you for joining us for another video which is being produced for you by the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Center for Injury Research and Prevention. In this video, Chapter 10, we'll talk about the different types of a program evaluation that are available to you, how to focus your evaluation design, and the different designs that you might want to consider for an impact and an outcome evaluation. Now in Chapter 9, we spoke quite a bit about the benefits of program evaluation, but in a nutshell, let's remember that evaluation is very important because it helps us to improve the management and the effectiveness of both our organization and our programs. But there are different types of evaluation that we can choose to pursue. Formative, process, impact, and outcome. Let's talk briefly about each of these types of evaluation. Formative evaluation typically takes place at the beginning of our program when it's first being developed, or if we have a pre-existing program that we're now looking to offer to a new setting or a new population. This is important because it tells us whether the proposed program elements are likely to be needed and how well they're understood. It also allows us to make modifications as needed for our new target audience and to maximize the likelihood that our program will succeed. A process evaluation happens as soon as the program implementation begins and during the operation of our program throughout. This helps us to kind of just take a measure about how well things are going and provides an early warning if there are any problems that arise which we need to fix. An impact evaluation happens after the program has made contact with at least one person and tells us the degree to which the program is having an effect on the target population's behaviors so that we know whether or not it's being effective in meeting the very measurable and specific objectives that we've set for our program. An outcome evaluation happens during the operation of the program at a predetermined interval of time and or at the end of the program. This tells us ultimately the degree to which we're meeting our program goals and provides evidence that we can use in policy and funding decisions. Focusing our evaluation design largely depends on the purpose of our evaluation, formative process impact or outcome, and it's possible that we might want to do a combination of these evaluation designs. This is going to largely depend on the budget that is available to us, as well as who wants to see our evaluation results. If we're producing this evaluation with our stakeholders and our funders in mind, then we're likely going to, at the very least, focus on an impact and or an outcome evaluation. If we're creating this evaluation because we're more looking at our evaluation design for ourselves so that we can make improvements and adjust things going forward, or perhaps because we're adapting a previous program and we want to make sure that we can try it out optimally with a new audience, that we're more likely to target our evaluation design to be formative or process oriented. The next step to focusing your evaluation design is to choose the evaluation methods that you will use. And we have a great deal of information about the qualitative and quantitative methods that you can use for your evaluation design in chapters 12 and 13. Impact and outcome evaluation are commonly used because they help us to understand the short-term and the long-term effects of our program on individuals' knowledge, attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors. This is also probably a more realistic endpoint for most public health programs and policies. And these are where we need to primarily focus on our quantitative and qualitative data to tell the story about how well our program is meeting its goals and its benchmarks. Impact and outcome evaluation is also important for sharing our program fidelity. Now recall from our previous chapters that when it comes to adapting a program, our fidelity answers the question, how similar are the results of our program to the original program from which we adapted? If we're developing a new program ourselves, and we're not adapting a previously established program, fidelity also answers the question, how closely do we follow the plans that we set forward in our program to what our actual outcome was? So for example, if we set out to pursue 25 people, do we reach 25 people? If we set out to have all of these people do surveys, did all of them do surveys? Did the questions that we asked match what our real design of our questions intended to be? So in other words, how closely did we match what we intended to do at the outset of our program? Impact and outcome evaluations can help us to answer these questions. 
There are a number of outcome evaluation designs that are available to you. Please read these tables more thoroughly on your own in your guidebook. Examples of the out evaluation designs that are available to you include randomized experiments, quasi-experiments, which are similar to randomized experiments, except your two groups are not randomized, before and after studies, sometimes called pre and post studies, independent cross-sectional studies, which help us to collect information at one point in time, panel studies, which collect information at multiple times throughout our program, and time series studies, which happen at pre and post intervention measures. You have just completed Chapter 10, Types of Program Evaluation in Section 3. In our next chapter, Chapter 11, we'll talk about how to start measuring program impact and how to design evaluation instruments. Thank you so much for watching.